So now that we've basically mastered how to take an antiderivative, find an antiderivative, we have fit in the table, which is in the problem, just undoing the derivative. And we now have integration by substitution, which does the same thing, just a kind of fancy way to do it. We're going to find out why all this stuff actually works. So we're going to study in section 4.3 how to find the area. How to actually find the area. Now we've done this, I've told you that it is that integral is basically finding the area, but would you like to see why? I hope you want to see why. This is the why part. So here's the why, because I said so. No, it's <laughs> I wish, make my job easy. Do it because I said so. Let's talk about area as a limit. Before we can get to area as a limit, I gotta tell you something about what's called sigma notation. You ever seen a sigma before? Yeah. If you're ever in a fraternity or something, you know there, there's these Greek letters called sigma. Uh, sigma is this, looks like a sideways capital M. Looks like that. You seen those? What's it mean? Yeah, it's a Greek letter S, really, so it means the sum. Uh, it says what you're supposed to do is add whatever I tell you to add. So let's just give a, a quick, you know, easy example. That right there, that k equals zero, says the variable or the indices I'm going to be using is the letter k. I'm going to start where k equals zero. I'm going to stop where k equals five. And I'm going to do that to each of the following k cubes. Here's what sigma notation means. It says what you're going to do is let k go to all the integers. Integers are, are, are the whole numbers between this one and this one. So basically, between and including. So you're going to start at 0 for k. Then you're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, right? Why not 6? That's too far. That's too far. So we stop at 5. And we're going to add all of that up. So sigma notation says it's a sum. Sum means add. You'd have 0 cubed plus because you have a sigma. Then you'd have, oh, the next one is 1 cubed. And then, oh, OK, we're going to add a sigma. Then we'd have 2 cubed. We'd have 3 cubed. We'd have 4 cubed. And we would have 5 cubed. And that's what the sigma notation actually stands for. Do you feel OK with the sigma notation? I need a head nod before we go on any further. You okay with that? Okay, good. Well, whew, scared me for a second. Uh, now, do I care what that is? Yeah, ultimately I do, but I'm going to give you better. I'm going to give you better ways to manipulate that. Before I give you those ways, I got to tell you about some properties. They're not hard properties. In fact, you're going to discover that they're very, very similar to what we can do with derivatives and integrals, namely these two. Uh, if you have Any summation Oops, I missed some. And you have a function of k, that's a function of k, right? Mm -hmm. Times a constant. What you can do is this. That c, if it doesn't depend on the k, you can pull out in front of your submission. <coughs> That's a true statement. You can pull out any constant. So this would be if C does not depend on K. Only in terms of multiplication. Yes. If C does not depend on K. Let me show you an example. This is going to blow your mind like a grenade. Like a mind grenade. Some of you aren't going to like this very much until you really think about it.
hopefully you think about it. That way you like it. That's my circular logic for you. Um, what's your indices with your index? <coughs> no, your index should be the letter that starts at 1 and goes to 5. J is your index here. So the function should be in terms of J. Anything depending on J cannot be moved outside. Anything not depending on J for this context is like a constant. What's the function inside? X x to the x to the third, right? Is that a J? Nope. It has nothing to do with J, right? Nothing at all. You know what I can do with that? That's this this does not this does not mean the same thing as this does. Right? This is not that right here. This is x cubed. X cubed. If I had this, if I had x cubed times j, then this would be x cubed times summation j equals 1 to 5 of j. I could do that. Anything not depending on j that's being multiplied, I can take out. Believe me? Now, I'm going to erase this because I want you to really think about what this means when I have no j. When I have no j, what's there? A what? You were right, I just didn't hear you. That didn't make sense. Yeah, a one. Very funny. What does it mean to do a summation from j equals 1 to 5 of 1? I need you to kind of get that where you have constant inside. Here's what this, this actually means. It means you add up whatever's here from 1 to 5, right? Now there's no place to plug in 1. There's no place to plug in 2 or 3 or 4 or 5. So what this means is the x cubed is going to hang out front. x cubed is going to hang out front no matter what. You follow me? This says, what are you adding from 1 to 5? What are you adding from 1 to 5? Is 1 a constant? Then 1 does not change. This says you have, when you go to 1, you have 1. When you go to 2, you have 1, not 2. When you go to 3, you have 1. When you go to 4, you have 1. When you go to 5, you have 1. This basically means 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you? Basically, this is going to be whatever that number is, n, 5 in this case. So this would be 5x cubed. That's what that means. Now, it should make a whole lot of sense because if you just think through it, I mean, think about this. This says you have x cubed plus x cubed plus x cubed plus x cubed plus x cubed. You get 5x cubed. Feel okay with the first property? Yeah. You sure? Are there questions so far? Some of you are staring at me blankly. Some of you, I'm boring you with tears. I hope I'm boring you with tears. I don't deal with tears very well, so don't start crying. It makes me feel awkward, sensitive and stuff. <laughs> okay, second property. Second property, just like you do with derivatives or with integrals, you can break up addition and subtraction. So if you have summation of two functions in terms of k that are being added together, yeah, it means that you can do summation of the first function plus summation of the second. And it also works with subtraction. We got to do one more thing before we get into actual theory and why this stuff works. I got to tell you some uh, some ways to manipulate these things, the way that you can figure out some sums, which is kind of nice. Uh, the formulas. Now these are in your book, but I'll give them to you explicitly. The most common ones that you're going to use. <clears throat> And then we'll start talking about this. So let's kind of consider what this is. You know, maybe I'll give you a, a last one too. 
I'll start with this last one because I want you to see it. We've talked about it though. What would a summation be from k equals 1 to n of the number 1? The difference between uh, n minus whatever k equals to me. You're overthinking it. N. N. 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, n times. Yes? Well, k is like equal to 5. So it'd be n times 5. I mean, I have 4. Say we start at 1, because it's a 1. Okay. You always start at 1. Oh, it always does, no matter what. Unless I tell you otherwise, but yeah, no reason to start at 1. So if you always start at 1, like I showed you here, you start at 1, and you go to n, you add 1, n times, you get n. You see the n? Also, if this had been any other number, like 4, notice that what you could do is pour, pull the 4 out front 4 times and change that into a 1. That works. That would be 4 times n. 4n, yes. If k starts at 2 or at 3. That was his question. Oh, okay. It won't. <laughs> it just doesn't do that. Not for these formulas to work. If it did, you'd have to figure out from 1 to n and subtract off from 1 to 4. Okay? Or whatever you, whatever this started. That would be the appropriate way to do that. It is a good question. You can do this. You understand the point? I said if you figure out from 1 to n, but you start at 4, just figure out from 1 to 3, one less than that. And then you subtract that. That would be fine. It is summation. <coughs> now, back to this. What this stands for is, let's see. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus all the way to n. True? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what this stands for is 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus all the way to n squared. Agreed? Okay. And what this one stands for is 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed plus all the way to n cubed. Are you okay on all this, this notation right here, what this is? What this is called is open form. This is called open form notation. So where you're actually explicitly adding everything together. You okie do okie dokie so far? What's awesome about this is someone's done the work, found the pattern, and you can do it on your own if you want. I'm not going to do this for you. It takes a long time, not too long. But uh, I'm not going to prove it. I'm going to give you what's called the closed form. The closed form says, shoot, if you know where you start, and you know where you're end, and you know what you're doing, you should be able to come up with a formula for it. And there are formulas. The first formula for this, for this one, so if you go from 1 to n of k, summation of k, it says if you take the, the number that you're ending at, what number are you ending at here? n. n, yeah, sure. And you multiply it by n plus 1, and you divide it by 2, you're going to come with the same answer. Which is pretty fantastic, actually. It's kind of cool. Uh, there's this guy named Carl Frederick Gauss, and way back in the day, uh, he's I don't know, I don't remember his exact age, but he was in grade school, and the teacher came in like hungover or something, 